Hello and back again here at Skate Around 3rd edition in Floref Namur. I am Knick Mops. And I am Riggs, and you are joining us for Nantes versus Royal Swedish Roller Derby, the Royal Army. Yeah, but who will be playing? Well, I will tell you. For Nantes uh, Derby girls playing in black, we have Meurtmaid, Iron Duck, Valdang, Adrenalins, Tankerbell, Barbie Roost, Bloody Cherry, Johnny, Nemesis, Greenbergen, Buzz, Groovy Beats, Dead, MacGyver, and Lizzie Ryder. And representing the Royal Army, who will be playing in white this afternoon, we have Pixie Nuxle Dust, Helsinki, Bella Bazaar, Slay Kay, Grumpy Space Princess, Darby Spice, Pax, Tantha, Lady Lovely Blocks, Glamazonia, who is the captain, Boss, and Merta, and they are the Royal Army. Yeah, both teams already played today, and uh, the Royal Swedish Army, I'm, I'm having difficulty with the name because it's royal and royal. So the Royal Army, they uh, took, uh, they lost against uh, Namur. Namur got uh, two five, uh, 252 against uh, 67 for the team that will be playing in white uh, later on. And then Nantes just left the track and is now back on the track and they won their last game of 172 against 80 uh, against Leeds Roller Derby. And it should be quite interesting because uh, our big game of the weekend will of course be Namur versus Nantes. Uh, they're the highest ranking coming into this tournament. But Nantes did beat Namur back in April. Um, so it would suggest to me that Nantes should come away from this with a higher differential, higher point spread. But Royal Army, you know, it didn't look like a blowout earlier. It, it, you know, yeah. they very much felt like they were in the game. Despite the scoreline, it definitely didn't reflect the gameplay that we saw. Yeah, for me, uh, when, I went, when I saw the game, uh, it was mainly, they got quite a lot of lead still, but they didn't manage to get the score on that lead passes. So maybe against Nantes, it will be better for them to actually score the points they need to uh, keep up in score wise uh, score wise absolutely pixie yeah. knuckle dust you know stole lead on a number yes. of occasions some incredibly fancy footwork uh, from her on display as well so yes. It should be interesting. And yeah. talking of Pixie Knuckle Dust, straight out on the jam line, we yeah. are seven seconds to Derby. And speaking of footwork against Iron Duck, who is also incredible at staying in bounds right on the inside or outside line. Absolutely. And we see Iron Duck taking off from the start line, staying in that deeper water, avoiding the edges, whereas Pixie Knuckle Dust goes in the absolute opposite charge and he's driving out front right now and this is very much what we saw in the last game for the Royal Army they snatched three points in the first jam yeah. um, and opened things up well uh, interesting to see that none of the team uh, well, uh, or Nantes is not playing active offense they did that last game and it it bode well for them so it's interesting to see that they do not choose that strategy right off the bat uh, here in this uh, second game of the day uh, for them Absolutely, we see the pivot for Non heading to the penalty box right now. Pixie Knuckle does with one to beat, gets around the side and claims the first lead of this game. Yeah, it took them almost uh, 45 seconds to get that lead, but they did manage. And uh, Iron Duck is still stuck in that um, defensive wall. And we're seeing far more cohesion from the Royal Army in the defence right now, able to keep their shape somewhat better. And maybe that first game, good warm-up for them. Yeah. I'm also interesting to see, uh, interested to see how the, the um, penalty count will be. Royal Army did play a very clean game uh, this morning against uh, Namur, while uh, Nantes struggled a bit um, penalty-wise. So I'm very curious to see how that will pa pan out for the both, both of the teams. We are seeing right now a really set in defensive opening jam right here. Uh, Royal, Royal Swedish have put up eight points so far with Pixie Knuckle Dust. Uh, initial has not been completed. In fact, the star pass has been completed, and that is number 25, Barbie Roost, has taken the star and has snatched four points from the Royal Army. But coming through on a third scoring pass was Pixie Knuckle Dust and putting up a huge opening jam of 12 points yeah. there. And uh, almost for two minutes, uh, since there were only more, uh, almost five seconds on the board when uh, Pixie decided to call it off. So, um, 
curious to see where this is going. Four for Nantes and uh, 12 for the Royal Army after that first jam. So we have 27 minutes and 45 seconds on the clock. So there is lots of derby remaining. That was your first jam. And we have seen a trend so far this weekend of running the jams almost all the way to the two minutes. But out there right now, we've got Bloody Cherry out there for Nantes going up against... I think it's not Pixie Knuckle Dust as we're seeing. No, I think it's, it's uh, Derby three, four, Spice. It's, uh, yeah, it's three, three, three four, five. Yeah, br uh, yeah, sorry. We've got Jammers. They're doing their thing. It's a pack advantage to none, and they do come away with lead as a result of that. Heavy on the offense there for uh, the Royal Army, but it seems that it doesn't really... Uh, seem to work against that strong defensive wall there for uh, Nantes. Um, Nantes, however, is choosing to play some offense that's number six dead. We have seen her play a successful offense before. And we are with a power jam in favor of Nantes, uh, who is going round for their uh, second scoring pass. Indeed, Bloody Cherry had a great game against uh, Leeds just uh, the game before this. Um, if you were watching, it was fantastic and very, very patient jammer. Keeps working, but is always watching for uh, that space to open up and doing that right now, coming up the inside line. Great work to get on round. So that is a second scoring pass there, taking this game to a tie of 12 all. Yeah, but the Royal Army did a very good job of, of killing that time uh, to get their jammer out now. Uh, so only one scoring pass made on that power jam while uh, the a Royal Army jammer was in the box. And so now we settle into our defensive formations. Derby Spice doing battle there, but it's a smooth and lovely star pass. That's going off to Bose, who takes the start for the Royal Army. And Bloody Cherry decides, yeah, that's enough for me. I will call that one. So with that extra four points, Nantes take the lead. Uh, it's 12 to the Royal Army, 16 to Nantes. And you've got about 25 and a half minutes left of this half. Yes. We're seeing... 030 uh, Pixie Knuckle Dust back on the track against. Um, I'm looking for the name. I'm, I it's adrenaline. Yes, out I'm sorry. There. Um, and these two tall jammers that uh, not have does allow them a lovely view over the the tripods at times. And we see adrenaline coming through now. But actually, it is Pixie Knuckle Dust who had a cracking first game and is absolutely opening this second game in the same way. For me, it's interesting to see how uh, the, Ar uh, the Royal Army manages to keep the jammer pretty close to the jammer line uh, at the beginning of the game, uh, while Nantes is actually speeding away uh, from that pack, uh, which gives the Royal Army a little bit of a, uh, an advantage. I think that really suits Pixie Knuckle Dust when it speeds up yeah. a little bit. You often see with very quick and agile jammers, if you recycle them, it spreads out your pack and they love to slalom their way through after that. But at the end of that jam, our scores right now are 14 to the Royal Army, 18 to not. I'm thinking we're looking at an official review. We are indeed, early wow. doors. Yeah, indeed. Feeling confident in this official review, I would assume. Yes, that gives us a little bit of time to talk about the support that uh, Namur uh, Roller Girls do. They uh, support INI, which is a local cat shelter uh, very close by, and some of our uh, from the home league actually volunteer there uh, with uh, the stray cats that have been left there. And um, they also support uh, Bruzel. They've been doing this for a couple of years. And uh, Bruzel collects and delivers menstrual protection to women in need. And uh, there's a box downstairs where you can leave um, some menstrual, menstrual pads or whatever for uh, people who can actually really use them. And uh, it's a great great way to use this roller derby community to actually do good and give back uh, as much as you can. Absolutely. And talking of doing good, we do see our wonderful officials in the middle discussing this official review. Our officials today are Russ Slane. My name is Jeb. Hoyle de Moor, Baff, Big Whoop, El Skellington and Knocken. Um, they are your referees today. Your non-skating officials are Purple Pain, Ginger Snaps, Tombola, Poker Face, Enjoy, Brain of Terror, Alex, Shivan, Goosebumps, Kit Catten and Grace Killit. We couldn't do it without you, so thank you for being here. 
Everybody is raising their hands. I will be waving back. Just for fun. I mean, that's what we're all here for this I, weekend, aren't yeah. we? Fun. I hope I didn't give like a secret message I mean, to anyone. I think I think we're okay. And okay. they were distracted by the delivery of the result of the official review. Ah. Um, as soon as we can get that information up yeah. to us, we are currently sitting on the back balcony of judgment, as we like to call it in the announcer world. So <laughs> that information might take a little time to reach us. I can tell you, however, that Nantes has not taken home the win of that official review and they have now lost their capability of asking for an official review during this half. So out on the track right now we do have number 12, uh, that is Bella Bizarre jamming for the Royal Army going up against Iron Duck for Nantes and Iron Duck coming up with lead but trapped in the pack between turns one and two we do see Bella Bizarre taken out into the infield and recycled by number 25 uh, and we see Iron Duck just sailing on through for the first scoring pass. The Royal Army now working their butts off to get um, that, off, uh, that offense for their jammer in and uh, am I seeing this right? Was there a star pass or no? Wow, I was I immediately confused. <laughs> I don't think we've had one just <laughs> yeah. yet, but I do believe Bella Bazaar is desperately hoping that Voss will take this star. Uh, but being recycled right now, all the way back down the crowd, straight away, and coming back in, but Nantes defense is there and ready. Nantes has really mastered the, the capability of playing offense and defense at the same time, and their jammers really know it, so they use their offensive wall to actually make their way around the pack. It's that kind of derby intelligence that really does change things up on track. Yeah. Um, but up front, Iron Duck with one to beat on a second scoring pass, gets on through as both is called out of play. And up the inside, a lovely bit of offense, fully screened by the Royal Army. And that allows Bella Bazaar to get on out and complete the initial as Iron Duck is back in the pack on a third scoring pass. I expect to see the taps hit, the hips tapped even any second now, but no, it looks like they're going to run this one as Bella Bazaar comes on through and steals four points. Good defensive work there by the Swedish uh, Royal Army, holding that jammer back and making her do the call off. Um, and it's again, to, it's amazing to see for me as a, as a player as well how good the Royal Army. I'm hoping I'm not jinxing it for <laughs> them uh, that they are managing to stay out of that penalty box. They are, they are very, very clean. In fact, all of the games so far today have been very clean, which I've been incredibly impressed about. Um, and that, of course, does mean that you guys have been watching a wonderful set of roller derby games so far today. So it looks like we've got Bloody Cherry out on the line up against... Oh, no, it's, no, that isn't dead. That is number 347. It is Bloody Cherry out there. Um, and we're going back out with Derby Spice for the Royal Army. And look at how that defensive wall of the Royal Army is, is, are really capable of holding that jammer back. It's until Nantes gets the offense uh, that the jammer actually can make a difference in that wall. Uh, Nantes as well, very strong on the defense side. Um, but it is Nantes who take the lead. Bloody Cherry out and ready for her first scoring pass. It does seem to me that the real difference is that not are able to deal with the incoming offense so much better than the Royal Army are at the moment, and that really is the difference. Uh, it was the same when they played Leeds. Mm. So it's, it's kind of their capability of doing the offense and defense and switching and, and, and in in intaking that, it makes their lead a bit stronger uh, in this game. Uh, ending this jam with 4-0 to zero, uh, in favor of Nantes. Uh, 32 on the board for Nantes and 18 for the Royal Army. So Adrenaline is back on the line for Nantes going up against Pixie Knuckle Dust. Um, I am no stats genius, but I would hazard to guess that these are the top performing jammers for both teams so far this weekend. And a joy to watch. Tall and short, proving that any body type is suitable in roller derby. As long as you can pick it up off the floor and get going again, you'll be absolutely fine. And it is Adrenaline who comes out at turn one with lead status.
she is a very high speed and also physical player, which makes it difficult for the defense to actually hold her for longer than uh, a period, a small period of time. Oh, that was excellent toe stop work, and then a huge hit followed by a very polite apology. <laughs> um, Adrenaline's doing it all here at Skate Around Three. Both takes the star pass once more for the Royal Army who are trying to stop Adrenaline in her tracks. And there comes a tap on the hips. And this time, not do keep the Royal Army scoreless. Yeah. Six to zero in favor of Nantes for that last gem. So two scoring passes made. So this is some excellent work from the Royal Army here, who are coming into this tournament um, the lowest ranked out of all four teams. Um, but I tell you what, I mean, if you want to check your flat track stats predictions, I reckon they are outliving that right now. Um, we'll be interested to see if they can keep that momentum up. But we have a jammer recycle. Iron Duck takes back Glamazonia, and we go again. Uh, that's an interesting move there by Iron Duck, probably done to kill some time for her uh, pivot, who is in the penalty box at the moment. Of course, the, pivot, the penalty box for the Royal Army is empty. And lead for the Royal Army in favor of Glamazona. Great strength to just barge on through that last block of but Iron Duck now finding some space and completes the initial as well as we see Glamazona come back in on a scoring pass now. A bit of a stumble and a lot of chaos there. I'm curious to see how many points that were. Three. Three points picked up by Glamazona there for the Royal Swedish, who have scored for the first time in a couple of jams now, putting three points on the board, taking them to 21. Nantes on 38. You've got 18 and a half minutes to go. Yes. It's bloody cherry out there. And a crouching tiger, hidden <laughs> Royal Army jammer, hmm. who will spring to life any second. It is. I'm going to be dirty 37. spies. Yes. I will learn to recognise those skates. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have number three. Really mixed pack <laughs> off the line. Formation starting to settle in now, but up front it is Bloody Cherry who has split out and spread out the Royal Army track. But they do an excellent job and recycle him all the way back behind the pivot line. But the jam uh, that blocker got a penalty, which is now s uh, sad to see that the jammer was all the way back recycled. Um, so uh, she should actually, she could have just stepped in front of her, uh, but that didn't happen here. And uh, having stashed the star, getting on through is Derby Spice, who is winning the foot race. And Bloody Cherry says, well, that's fine. I have control of this jam. I should end it here. Yes. So it has been a fantastic day and we still have one more game for you this afternoon which is Namur versus Leeds. That's going to be a very entertaining game. I do believe Leeds beat Namur back at some point this year. I could be wrong about that. I know they met at Paris Burning. Yeah, it's it says on the... Um I'll see we'll, here. we'll get you some more facts on that. In the meantime, Adrenaline is out there up against Pixie Knuckle Dust. And Adrenaline leaves the pack behind, leaves them standing at the jam line pretty much, claiming lead within 15 seconds. As we see Pixie Knuckle Dust stash to star, finding room on the outside. Adrenaline looks for that line, but cuts back inside beautifully. And the toe start work, I mean, Adrenaline just literally runs through the pack. Those it's amazing legs. to see how she uses her physical force to actually push her way through and, and all the blockers are trying to grasp on to just keep upright when she enters the track. Uh, and uh, it, it was, however, Namur who won at Paris is Burning from Leeds uh, with um, uh, seven, 97 points. So oh. I'm, I'm really sh curious to see how that happens. That's going to be an interesting game. You should yes. tune in for that one. Yeah, sh for sure. It's a home league as well, so... This is very true. But out there right now, Iron Duck is going up against, uh, it says it's Derby Spice, and it is, in fact, Derby Spice up there. But on the outside line, great toe start work, amazing strength on the line. It comes Iron Duck as your lead jammer. But there is, what, 10, 20 foot between these jammers as Derby Spice looks to throw things forward. And Iron Duck urging the team to get in front. 
If you've ever bench coach, you will know that that get together and get in front. They are your yeah. chosen phrases. Yeah. But and I did, I did have the idea that um, last game uh, the Royal Army didn't go in front as much as they should have, and now they actually choose that strategy. So I'm, I'm thinking they, they had a little talk about that, and now everybody clicked in their head like, okay, we have to go yeah, I think to the front. Yeah, there's been some good reflection, and we're yeah. seeing that right now on the score as the Royal Army on 22, mm. not on 45, with 15 minutes to go in this half. So Pixie Knuckle Dust is doing back up with dead on that line there. Uh, but Bloody Cherry is being held by a beautiful Royal Army tripod at the back, which is allowing number two to go in and play that Slay Le Clay playing offense up front, trying to set Pixie Knuckle Dust free. But we're not even into turn one right now as the blockers lock this down. And it's again uh, Namur who chooses, and uh, or not is, excuse me, who chooses not to play an offense um, and uh, do defense with four and it bodes them well when when uh, Bloody Cherry comes out as lead and uh, Pixie Knuckle Dust actually struggling uh, to uh, close her initial pass. Absolutely, back in looking for points is Bloody Cherry now just stepping through the Royal Army wall there. Considers calling it, changes her mind, gets the recycle, looking to use her own wall as maybe a flip-flop manoeuvre, but even flip -flop the flop maneuver. nice flip flop so you know a nice screen and you yeah. flip flop from yours to the other yeah, yeah. should remember official, that it's official turn <laughs> yeah ah, yeah <laughs> but as we see up front bloody cherry picking off royal army blockers one to beat gets on round completes the scoring pass as we do see slay le Kay going to the penalty box so royal army dropping to three some beautiful blocking here on the pivot of the Royal Army. It's number 44 who doesn't want to give her any space, but she does make a forearm penalty um, doing it so ferociously. Uh, some offense that didn't really pan out for the Royal Army. Yeah, the Royal Army struggling a little to get this initial pass done uh, while Nantes keeping up and keeping the speed in the game. I think this slightly stronger lineup of blockers is suited better, or sorry, slightly shorter, um, more agile set of blockers was really working to contain Pixie yeah. Knuckle Dust then. Incredibly agile jammer, um, and I do think lineups are starting to change ever so slightly. Yeah. And if you can get that jammer matchup, you know, to work in your favor, it's very nice. The Royal Army do have a few slightly taller blockers, which m should be helping them with adrenaline, but adrenaline's just blazing through this weekend, yeah. quite frankly. That's for sure. I did have the idea that Nanta against Lead had the upper hand because they are so agile and and and, uh, sm and smaller players. Uh, and But now they are up against a team that's also agile, sm uh, very fast, and uh, smaller players. So I'm... I'm I'm, I'm seeing the struggle more than I saw it against the game in, in Leeds. Absolutely. Or with Leeds. So we've just had a lovely official timeout. Our fabulous crew just making sure everything is spit spot and we get that lovely whistle that says we're about to have some more derby. Yes. So adrenaline's, as we said, out on the line. And it's Going. the Battle of the 12s. It is. Bella Bazaar is out there as well for the Royal Army. It's the first time the, these two uh, jammers play against each other. We see adrenaline's on the outside line, cuts back inside, and the physicality, that shoulder movement. And those are two formidable blockers for the Royal Army. So well-earned lead status for adrenaline's there. Does look like they might have taken a little something out of her in a few of those yeah. hits, though. But she does take her time, and that makes her an, uh, a, an, an important player to uh, a force to be reckoned with. Just take her time, and then let her blockers do their job. Do me some offense, skate around through, and I collect all the points without touching anyone. Absolutely knows when when to put the burners on. A very efficient jammer. Yeah. So 22 to the Royal Army, play 60 to Nantes. We're down to 11 minutes and 45 seconds of the first period. It's Derby Spice versus Iron Duck. Pack advantage with the Royal Army. There's no space on that jam line, and Iron Duck once more looking for the recycle on the jammer. 
takes Derby Spice back a little bit. And now we settle into our defensive formations. But yet again, up front, Slayla Kay in there looking to play the offense for the Royal Army. Iron Duck had a little moment there with her offense who came from the penalty box, nodding slightly, when I know you're coming, I will wait for you. And it pays out. She she actually manages to use that offense very well and get the lead status in the, this gem. So we see Derby Spice stashing the star here between turns one and two. I think looking for uh, the star pass, but not very much aware of that and guarding the pivot right now as Iron Duck goes on through for a first scoring pass. Coming back round now for a second. That was a successful start pass. So we have uh, the pivot for our Royal Swedish Army with the cover in hand, trying to battle the walls for Nantes, who are, quite frankly, amazingly strong. Um, I mean, it's a bit mean, isn't it, passing the start when your pivot's stuck in the back as well. <laughs> it just feels no, like but they did it on the inside corner, and then one of the Nantes players just hit her out really, really straight quick. on it. Yeah. So we do see, and it is number 111, Helsinki, who has taken the star and is the focus of all of Nantes' attention right now. As up front, Iron Duck continues to just push through the Royal Army, just pushing aside blockers. And I'm missing in uh, uh, the Royal Army a little bit of uh, energy, uh, which they had in the beginning of the game. It kind of it kind of went for them. Uh, they started pretty strong, but now they, they kind of want to keep up, but it seems very difficult. And Nott is playing a high-paced game, really, really quick, extremely strong on the yeah. one-on-ones. That's a huge gem, 20 unanswered points put up by Iron Duck, which equals, that is the highest scoring gem we've had in any game so far today. 20 points um, is being put up by Namur, it's been put up by, uh, I do believe the Royal Army have put it up as well with Pixie Knuckle Dust, and now Iron Duck getting the 20 in there too. So today's challenge is, can anybody break the 20 point mark? Bring back the jam a lap point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was just saying the same thing there, the game earlier. But 20 to 0, and it was not a power jam. No. That's an amazing score. Trust uh, die blockers. Done by, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so it is working really well. So, um, it, I mean, it, it is about about right in terms of flat track stats predictions. They were, well, actually, I tell, tell a lie. That is far too much I maths for so. me to do. I was looking at leads versus somebody else later to stats, and that, was, that maths was easier. This math is not easy. It says that seven, for every seven points that non put up, uh, the Royal Army will get three. So I'll let you guys at home with your calculators work out how this is going. I, I don't do math. That is serious math. That is. Yeah. That's not quick math. That is not quick math at For me, all. nothing is quick math. <laughs> I should not be allowed to do math. <laughs> I'd like to not have to do math. Yeah. Nobody told me announce a life contained in this much math. Yeah. It's rude. But back to the action. Bloody Cherry is going to take on Pixie Knuckle Dust. And we have an empty penalty box. So they have a lovely set of blockers each to deal with. Nantes is keeping the box pretty empty indeed. And I'm, it was a struggle in the last game. But they did it. They are managing pretty well. I, it might be with the calm game the Royal mm. Army is playing that they can feast off and use that uh, to actually they calm themselves. I think, you, I think you are right, actually. Maybe quite easily influenced by you know that that style of play. But a lovely, lovely bit of footwork on the outside line, just stepping around that last block as sees Bloody Cherry picking up lead for Nantes. But working hard, as always, is Pixie Knuckle Dust with major energy and awesome lateral movement, but looking for room on the inside. Uh, but the Royal Army do manage to shut that lane down to stop Bloody Cherry completing that first scoring pass. Nantes in the back with offense for their jammer and then uh, Nantes in the front with also against the offense from the Royal Army. But you have to look how good Nantes is at countering that offense. It's as if it's not even there. Um, and that is something I've always found quite impressive when a wall is able to almost incorporate that offensive block into their wall um, and use them against their own jammer sometimes. It's a beautiful thing to watch. But what a star pass! Wow. Slick, sexy on the outside. And that was setting Bella Bazaar free there, looking for the call off, and bloody cherry obliges. 
That was so good. Yeah, she even got a hand clap from one of the Nantes uh, players because it was so that, fucking cool. That was oh, I'm sick. Saying, I'm sorry. Nobody heard it. It was fun. I think I, <laughs> think I covered you on that one. 22 to the Royal Army. It's my first one. It's my first one. And it's getting tasty here. That is what you need to know. 7 minutes 45 seconds on the clock of this left of this first half. Adrenaline is on the line and Glamazona is going out there for the second time to jam. Tall versus tall, off the line. Oh, and I mean, that was four seconds. Yeah. Four, four seconds, four steps, and Adrenaline is your lead jammer of note. And in the beginning of this game, it sometimes even took 40 minutes, uh, 40 seconds, not minutes, yeah. seconds to get that lead. So it's to see how the uh, how Nantes is again growing in that dominance uh, level uh, in this game against the Royal Army. So the Royal Army looked determined to catch and contain Adrenaline because they let her out so quickly. But although a slower lap, Adrenaline does complete it, bags the four points and not are very much within touching distance of that century mark now. Incredibly dominant player Buzz uh, manages to play offense and defense, hold everyone, making sure that everything, she has a good eye on the track, uh, seeing what happens and what should happen uh, on that track. Look holding one-on-one -on -one blocking, looking for that sweet, sweet pass again from the Royal Army. It's almost like they're a relay race, they're passing the baton, just coming in and stealing off with it. That time it was not as effective, keeping Helsinki trapped by the norm tripod offense coming in now but as always not just sh shaking it off the offense has been done on the bracer but the, the two people in the back are so strong at holding the jammer back they don't even mind that the the bracer is not there um, so the offense is not as effective as it should be really needs to come in and attack the base of that triangle mm -hmm. uh, to really disrupt the stability because as you say, that two wall is very good. But Adrenaline is back in on a third scoring pass. There's a two wall put up, and Adrenaline just just having a little thing and a little little conversation. Could you take out that jammer, yeah. that blocker at the front for me? Uh, but Glamazona says you can take her out, but you can't take me out. Forces the recycle. What Glamazona is doing is incredible. She did. She started this jam as a jammer and then taking the cover off and then being able to dominate as well as a blocker. It's very difficult to do, to make that mental switch uh, in your head. Some great work happening out on track. So we do see Derby Spice taking the line for the Royal Army for this next jam. Iron Duck is out there and uh, Iron Duck will be looking to slap the century on this jam. 22 to the Royal Army, 99 to Nong, five minutes on the clock. I really like slap the century on. That's what we like to do. You see that? Derby Spice taken out by a poltergeist there. Ghost blockers are a thing. If you ever fall over, just blame it on a ghost blocker. Mm, yeah, I'll do it. So being recycled is Iron Duck. We uh, don't have lead jammer yet, which is testament to the Royal Army right now. Also, the tripod of Nantes is working really, really hard to keeping that jammer, even pushing her to the floor uh, at the end of the, that track. I thought Darby Spice was going to go vicious Van Gogh on us and crawl <laughs> through the legs, but stay, decides to get back up and re-engages with what we all know now as the sad place trademark. <laughs> but uh, it is a sad place to be. Yes. But here come your friends, and the offense is launched. That's freeing up some space, but still, Derby Spice can't shake that excellent, excellent work of Miat Maid at the front there, taking over duties. Barbie Roos now uh, rejoined by Miat Maid, and they have no intention of letting Derby Spice go anywhere. A high block is being called on Iron Duck, Gemmer of. Uh, not so we now have a power jam in favor of the Royal Army two-minute jam on uh, is going on But it's only 45 seconds on the clock still and Darby Spice with one to beat but in comes the cavalry support uh, The outplay pool comes and Darby Spice completes the initial It's what the Royal Army is waiting for with this offense move holding one blocker back keeping the back the back uh, the pack in the back and then uh, letting their jammer push them out, which is a great strategy if there's only two, or th but with three it's a bit more of a struggle, of course. Definitely is, and it's getting very mixed up here. It's the exit of turn four, but number 12, Bella Bazaar, sitting on Iron Duck as she rejoins us, looking for him on the inside and shut down and denied. That was number eight, Lady Lovely Blocks. 
which I really like as a derby name. Lady yeah. Lovely Block. It's got a lovely rhythm to it. Yeah, she so. probably drinks tea every day. <laughs> So there it is, 26 points on the ball for the Royal Army, but not now on 103. Two minutes and 50 left in this first period, and it's been a really good game. Again, the Royal Army not looking outplayed, not matching that scoreline no. that we're seeing. It was the same one they played Namur this morning. I feel that they started off better this game, but it's... I say that they lose the momentum a little. I think you're absolutely right. They're opening 10 minutes and they're closing 10 minutes are fantastic. It's just that other 40 they've got to sort out. But they are learning massively and we've already seen a huge leap and change in their tactics as they come up against Nantes here. But Bloody Cherry is out, lead jammer of note. And it is a power jam in Nantes favoured this time as Pixie Knuckle Dust sits in the box, star cover in hand. Buddy Cherry recycled back to the entrance of turn one, now looking for room on the outside, but the Royal Army able to get bodies back in front. That tripod is waiting at the exit of turn one and it just slowing things down. So, well, penalty kill joys right now um, are the Royal Army. And for the first time in this game, I feel like the, the offense of Nantes is not coming building up to their expectations or coming up to their expectations. They have such a strong offense and at the end of that jam they really couldn't get that managed and Pixie uh, Knuckle Dust is back on track uh, and not only got to push out one scoring pass. That's it and the, that is a, an excellent penalty kick. I think that's the second time we've seen the Royal Army do that but look at that work yes. by Bloody Cherry there. Whether it was pirouetting or falling <laughs> it worked. I liked it. Eight points unanswered there. Yeah. So when derby and figure skating combine, it's, it's beautiful. Anybody who defies gravity is all right <laughs> by me. 26 points for the Royal Army on the board. A 1-1-1 one, one, one for Nantes. We are into the final minute of the period. And Adrenaline is on the line. Going up against Bella Bazaar. Empty penalty box, so full complement of blockers to deal with. And oh, up the inside, Bella Bazaar steals lead status from Adrenaline, who will be rightly outraged. That's only the second time that's happened to Adrenaline yeah. today. Good offense, but not able to benefit from it as much as they would want, I'm guessing. And Adrenaline cuts through that wall like it's just a bit of soft butter. Uh, but it is Bella Bazaar who comes out round first with. Um, Adrenaline's in close pursuit. And we are hearing the lovely four whistles which call the end of that jam. It was four all in that one. A great one for the Royal Army to finish on. Uh, there are 30 points on the board for them, 115 to none. I don't think we're going to get a second jam, another jam in here. And we don't indeed. There comes the whistle for half time. So you have got 14 minutes and 50 odd seconds to get a cup of tea or whichever European beverage <laughs> you would like. A cup of tea? You can have a cup of tea. You can tell the Brits are in town. Get yourself a cup of tea. Nothing else. Only a cup of tea. We only allow a cup of tea. Yeah. And join us back here very shortly for the second half of the Royal Army versus Nantes. Good afternoon and welcome back to Skate Around 3. You are rejoining us for what is promising to be a hopefully very good second half. The Royal Swedish Roller Derby with their A team, the Royal Army, are here playing against Nom. The score at the end of the first half was 30 to the Royal Army and 115 to Nom. So we get ourselves ready for a second half. I'm uh, interested to see if uh, the Royal Army finds their second breath in that, uh, in that second half. And uh, I'm uh, also really looking forward to seeing more great offense mm. by Nantes. Absolutely. So we are all set. Our officials are taking their position. We've got 15 seconds to Derby. And we are very much looking forward to this. We are starting with an empty penalty box. Mm -hmm. And it has been an incredibly clean game. Yeah. So here we go. It is Derby Spice for the Royal Army versus Bloody Cherry for Nantes. Really mixed pack, but we start to separate now. Both jammers into the middle, but just testing those lines slightly. Bloody Cherry choosing the inside. Derby Spice trying to drive on the outside, but comes back inside to do full battle with that 
non-tripod. One to beat at the front, does so. And the Royal Army really like to open with lead. Yeah, and they're really good at it too. So I think Nant also wants to open with lead. But. It's just not quite happening for them, but the Royal Army, if they can keep this up in the second half and really close down that differential uh, and do themselves a wonder in terms of ranking. We have a star pass for Nantes um, to, I cannot know, but the pivot. The pivot. It's a good person to give it to. Yeah. But that is number six. That's a captain for Nantes dead who is now the jammer of record, but inside taking a huge shirt whip. It is the year of the shirt whip 2019. Yeah. Derby Spice though, and not again reforming and just shutting things down. See the Royal Army just spreading out that pack. There's take. a bit of counter offense there um, between the two offense players of Nantes and uh, the Royal Army. A little bit of, and it's uh, Dead who finds her way past on the inside line. So four points each, but of course Darby Spice will have some in the pocket already. Hips will have been passed, but not getting the big recycle. There was a call off there on the outside line by the Royal Army, and they scored the four points on that last jam. It was a struggle, though, to get those last four points on the board, and it's up four to eight in favor of uh, the Royal Army, so six to eight. They do a great job of getting points, getting lead in the opening games. Like I said, their opening and their closing of games is good, but it all gets a bit squiggly in the middle. Mm -hmm. So yeah. let's see if they can pull that together. Adrenalist versus Pixie uh, Knuckledust, who gets flung around and catches up with adrenaline. Little bit of defensive jamming on the way through, and now Pixie Knuckledust is winning the foot race. Adrenaline's casual as you like, hands in the air, taps the hips, burning as much of the clock as possible. This would have been a great way, uh, time for the Royal Army to go to the front and give Pixie the benefit of, of maybe scoring that one point. Absolutely, and I know a lot of a lot of teams don't like to do that because it becomes a race, mm -hmm. um, but if that other team comes with you and you've got a speedy jammer like Pixie mm. in your rotation, it feels like a risk that's almost worth running, to be honest. Yeah. So. I get, I get that you don't want to make more chaos because mm -hmm. Derby is already organized chaos, but still, it could have been the opportunity. Absolutely. With a fast, agile jammer, you want to speed that pack up and spread things out. It's really hard to stay together as a wall, um, but uh, when you are at speed. Iron Duck comes through, claims lead for Nod, but there is only a quarter of a trap between Bella Vizar and Iron Duck. Iron Duck in the pack now, hands to hips straight away. Wants to shut the Royal Army out, and they do. Picking up three points. I'm amazed by how, how a composed player Iron Duck actually is. So really calm, really knows what she's doing. She might not bring up like the massive, massive gems, but every gem is consistent, good, well-placed, and she knows what she's doing. It's good to see. Consistency really is mm. key in Roller Derby. If you can keep going out and keep putting up points, it really does make yeah, a difference. Derby but we've got Spice Derby Spice now versus Bloody Cherry, and the penalty box has stayed remarkably empty in these opening jams. We love to see it, but as I say that, of course, uh, a pivot going to the box. I think that's number six dead. Yes, it is. Having a little sit down and I think yeah. about what she's done. Mm. She should. <laughs> this puts the Royal Army in the advantage of being able to send an offense with keeping their tripod running. But that tripod from Nantes is really not easily distorted by that one offense. You can see that offense like thinking, like, hmm, where shall I place myself? And then everybody is closed again and the jammer is stuck again. It doesn't seem everyone. to matter. That, that, yeah. that, that is the most fluid triangle you've ever seen. It becomes yeah. a three flat wall if it needs to. It rotates where necessary. And none are so excellent at just plugging those gaps. But we see the pack starting to drive forward now on the crowd straight away. And it is Skyler K. Slayla K. My apologies for murdering that name. Going to the box. Uh, so that now leaves Nant with be able to play 3D and one offense, and it is of course the pivot dead, who is very effective at the shutting down Glamzona there. 
No, I, I, Bloody Cherry taking that lead, and it took a very long time, more than one minute to actually close that lead for Nantes. So again, like we started the last game where it took so long to get lead, uh, like we started this game where we, it took long to, to close the lead and um, the Royal Army was defensive-wise actually equally as strong as uh, Nantes. I'm really, I'm really uh, curious to see where this is going and I hope for the Royal Army to keep yeah. this up. I wonder if it's a case of focus and concentration. Sometimes it's the mental uh, ability to keep things together that, that disappears a little yeah. bit. Um, Derby is a mental game, if nothing else. Absolutely. I think that might be the weakness that we see in the Royal Army. They, they get quite rattled, and as we've seen, not playing some excellent defense. But coming to the end of that jam, it does look like not picked up the four, and they did shut the Royal Army out. 38 plays 128, and you've got just under 24 minutes on the clock. It is Pixie Knuckle Dust against Adrenalines on the track now for the next jam. Very low, very ready blockers there. Pixie Dust, shirt whipping, trying to stay inbound, but does pick up a multiplayer. I love it when Germans get multiplayer blocks. You're like, what? What are you doing? But it is a power jam now to Adrenalines, who will continue as a patient jammer just to wait for that offense to come through and set her free. Oh, but picks up a black box, so we are going to have the old jammer switcheroo. This is the new back block rule where uh, not only you don't have to push a, a blocker down, but also just charging in the back is considered a back block. And that's what uh, 94 of uh, the Swedish Royal Army actually benefited from. Uh, giving their a, a power jam in their advantage, uh, it's going to be a two minute jam, I think. I or do. it's lead. Yep, you're absolutely yeah. right. Everybody's been to the box, so nobody has the power yeah. except the jam timer. But Pixie Knuckle Dust has got the power to find her way through on the outside line. Strength for days, but Adrenalis is back on there trying to complete that initial, I believe. And Pixie trying to use that little bit of chaos of that uh, offense, but again, Nantes is really good at getting back from that offense and making a strong defense. So um, it's really not easy to just use that uh, chaos since they're always so prepared. And uh, the Royal Army was not, at, as you could yeah. see in that last so pass. We see the Royal Army picking up a go, and it is Buzz. And that's a bit of a surprise, because I do think Buzz has picked up an injury. And I'll be honest with you, that will be quite a blow to non if it is the case. It looked like there was a contact between Pixie Knuckle Dust and Buzz in this far corner here. And I think it looks like a, almost like a dead leg, yeah. like right in the thigh. Yeah, probably like one of those uh, electric uh, hits. And Adrenalins is going to the box again. This jam, that's her second penalty of this jam. That is uh, penalty trouble yeah. for Adrenalins. And the one jammer you don't want to give this to is uh, Pixie Knuckle Dust because she is a, such a strong and agile jammer. Absolutely. Um, so this jam will go to the Royal Army uh, with 10 on the board for them and 4 for Nantes and a power start in favor of the Royal Army for the next jam. That is number 37 who will jam this one and Derby Spice. Something I have noticed about Adrenalins, Adrenalins is the fact that actually when they pick up a penalty they often pick up another one straight afterwards. So although plays a majority clean, it's sometimes double bubble when, when they do come. The but responsibility as a jammer for not making penalties is also so high because the cost is so much higher than when a blocker makes a penalty. I'm not saying blockers should make penalties, but no. it's, a, it's quite a difference in the, in, the play, in the gameplay, of course. And we see non-defense here just settling down. Containment's really good. Royal Army trying to offer some offense once more with Slay Le Kay. But everybody's back on track now, and we are in turn two, and we are going nowhere. That was a good penalty kill there by Nantes, since there is no lead called yet, and Adrenalins is capable of getting lead if she manages to pass that uh, tripod from uh, uh, Swedish Army quickly. But no, it is the lead for Derby Spice, um, and I really see, wanted to see if uh, they managed to score the points uh, in this jam. 
Yeah, it does look like the Royal Army just able to hold back Adrenaline. Adrenaline is just struggling things and the links a little bit. But also, as we've seen before, is a patient jammer, knows when to turn the speed on, does know how to conserve energy. Just waiting for non-blockers to come in and just level some people. Yes, forearms penalty call to the pivot for not. And uh, in the meanwhile, Derby Spice is working on that on that scoring pass. Does not manage to get through, uh, but she does score four points. Uh, so four to zero for uh, the Royal Army. Uh, and that's their second uh, winning gem in a row. They have definitely started to pick up things here. 14 points put up by the Royal Army in the last two jams. So it's good stuff. We've got Bloody Cherry out on the line for Nantes. Uh, I believe that is number 12, Bella Bazaar. It is for the Royal Army finding room on the outside, taking advantage of that pack advantage that the Royal Army had. Coming out with lead is Bella Bazaar. As we see, Bloody Cherry stashing the star, but escaping the pack and completing the initial at the exit of turn one. Meantime, Bella Bazaar is in, but opens up that inside line. Royal Army playing great offense there. They're going to run the track. Oops, a little bit of a stumble there, skating outside all, uh, accidentally. <laughs> and uh, Nantes is playing the offense for their jammer. Uh, but this, the Royal Army manages to keep her and uh, recycle her back while Bella Bizarre is working on her second scoring pass of this jam. Yeah, you love to see this, the Royal Army running the jam. The apex, if you're tuning in, look, somebody's running the jam. This is how we do things with the blockers. Have earned themselves a power jam as Bloody Cherry takes a seat in the box. Quick offense there by the Royal Army, and it is successful, uh, distorting the wall for Nantes. Not in, making them incapable of doing defense. 12 points on the board, and I believe this is the highest scoring gem for the Royal Army so far. If, yeah, if Bella can complete this lap, we'll steal highest jam for uh, the Royal Army from Pixie Knuckle Dust, who has scored 12 in the opening jam of this game. But we, I should have said, said nothing. Oh, we have yeah. a power jam in favor of Nantes uh, now, uh, seeing what they make of it with uh, Bloody Cherry as a jammer out of the penalty box. So we see the Royal Army trying to get themselves back together. But setting up with, uh, in, the, in the back, mm, they are able to take off Bloody Cherry, who is recycled by number five, Tantha there for the Royal Army. And big jam from the Royal Army there. So non picked up five, I believe, in that jam. 14 to the Royal Army. Making Bella Bazaar the highest scoring jammer for the Royal Army in this game. We'll have to see if Pixie comes back out and goes, all right then. <laughs> all right, 14, you say. 14, I can do this. Because there's plenty of time. All of a sudden, she's Italian. <laughs> we, we do plenty of accents here. I'd like to represent all of Europe. <laughs> so 66 to the Royal Army plays 137 to Nantes. It's a team timeout by Nantes at the moment. We've got 17 minutes on the clock. And it's a good time because the momentum really has yes. swung to the Royal Army right now. They will probably take this time to just reset themselves they were dominating that mm. first half and they kind of lost that domination just the last two three gems and they will probably want to take it back and say royal army it's nice that you have uh, all of these things but we want to win this absolutely so the lovely rolling whistle comes in the teams are summoned back to the track and again we start with an empty penalty box which is kind of like like Valhalla, uh, when we talk about <laughs> roller derby. It really is. I mean, I have to say, the standard of play this weekend has been excellent, and mm. it's also been incredibly clean. Um, testament to the work these teams are putting in. But we've got Glamazona on the line for the Royal Army, going up against Adrenaline's Fort Knox. And straight into our defensive formations. Uh, the Swedish, the Royal Army trying to play some offense up front, but both just keeping an eye on things and now ready to brace as we see Adrenaline's pushing through. 
Yeah. And uh, Adrenalins is really good at using that uh, that defense wall of her own, and she sees where they are, and then she thinks pushing them to the outside, and then using her own defense wall to uh, skip on by on the inside line, bringing her quickly to her first scoring pass. Uh, Glamazona in pursuit. So Adrenalins, there's that burst of speed from Patient to driving through and picking up all four points. Very reminiscent of how Rogue Runner jams as well. Just that cool, calm, hanging at the pack, but I suppose Adrenaline has that advantage of being ever so much taller and just being able to get a really good view of the pack. They also have the, the benefit of, of being up with so much more points, so they can actually be patient players mm -hmm. and, and keep those uh, penalties low and making sh the most out of every situation. So slightly different matchup we're going to see now. We're going to see Pixie Knuckle Dust versus Iron Duck. Empty penalty box again, so we're keeping all four on the box. And as I say it, literally commentator's curse takes Iron Duck to the box. Pixie Knuckle Dust still has opportunity to earn lead and is trying desperately to find some room, some purchase in this pack. But the, the offense for the Royal Army is not really making the most of this situation uh, pixie knuckle does being recycled back and uh, they holding they try to hold the pack back but pixie knuckle does missing the force to actually push that wall completely out uh, and the jammer of uh, Nantes is back on track i have to be honest if i had pixie out there i feel like i just want to send everyone in you know man on man just take out a blocker and create some space for pixie to work in because she's got those lateral skills got that footwork and agility but Iron Duck as you say is out now driving against the Royal Army at the in turn two but that tripod is holding strong what I think is that uh, the Royal Army is actually actively playing that offense but the non roller, der uh, roller derby is so good at countering that offense that it feels almost as if you're doing nothing and it, nothing really works nothing makes you feel worse as a blocker playing offense than anything that you do doesn't work i'm just making a pack i'm just <laughs> making a pack <laughs> i'm actually blocking my own block my own jammer i feel quite, so bad quite literally making up the numbers <laughs> yeah. i end up making up numbers four, <laughs> it's four on that pass coming back in now for a second scoring pass Pixie Knuckle Dust fighting that wall, still on the initial pass. That started as a power jam uh, for uh, the Royal Army, trying to use that offense. And uh, with a little hoppity hop on the inside line, she did manage to get through. And she's on her first scoring pass. But it was, the jam was just done. Done and done. So the Royal Army stay on 66, non take themselves to 149. You've got 13 and a half minutes left on the clock. And I also want to say that it was a two minute jam and the Royal Army did manage to keep them at, at eight points. That's still not a lot. That's not really a loss to no. say. It's really great to see that your defense is so strong that they can actually hold that jammer for so long or so well. And Please, please understand that we're, you know, there is quite a disparity between the rankings of non and the Royal Army, for those of you not entirely familiar. Um, so there is quite a gap here, but the Royal Army really stepping up to the level of competition here at Skate Around 3. As we see Derby Spice taking on Bloody Cherry. We're 20 seconds into the jam, no lead jammer established as we hit turn three. Offense there played in for both teams and some line working but it doesn't really work out for Bloody Cherry being recycled all the way back and we have Derby Spice still pushing that Nantes tripod as much as she can trying to use her offense Grumpy Space Princess there was doing a fantastic job of keeping Bloody Cherry back but the pack moved forwards and uh, just caught Grumpy Space Princess out which also is a great name and uh, Bloody Cherry trying uh, again being uh, penalized for her uh, for her line work dr being drawn back uh, and still no initial pass on this jam. We've done a full lap. We're back at the at the pivot line right now. And Derby Spice looks like she's a, just stuck in that. It's part. It's become part of the wall. 
of none <laughs> at this point. But we see uh, with only 35 seconds left on the clock, Bloody Cherry claims lead for none as Glamazona goes to the box for the Royal Army. Scoring pass for Nantes now, um, pretty quickly manages to get through with uh, seemingly no effort and a star pass is done by the Royal Army to number 111, that is Helsinki, who has had the star cover uh, pass to her a couple of times this game. Not and leaving that inside line <laughs> wide open there. Not has the, the tendency of when it's uh, a power jam, uh, when uh, the star is passed, we try to keep the game going because a pivot might not be as good of a jammer. Yeah. But you see sometimes it doesn't really work and then they do score the four points. Yeah, just stole on in up the inside there. But I'm really sorry for the jammers in this case. They worked so hard and it's only eight to four. <laughs> Some, and these guys, Nump, for example, will make you pass them three or four times. They really want you to earn your points. So we see Adrenaline's going up against Bella Bizarre. It's 70 to the Royal Army, 157 to none. Final 10 minutes and out front, it's both versus Adrenaline. Adrenaline just takes the contact and strolls on through for lead. Big recycle by not big big recycle but have you seen the jam line here it is again <laughs> yeah <laughs> so adrenaline is now on a scoring pass and the energy in that pack the change in tactic that adrenaline uses depending on the blockers she's up against is excellent to watch became very physical as, as the royal army had put out a very big tall wall yeah she's a, a very physical player to say the least Whew. And uh, so are a lot of the people from Nantes uh, kicking the jammer of the Royal Army to the ground, leaving their jammer to score for a second time, uh, passing quite frankly easily through the pack. Yeah. Um, this is what happens a lot. So the, norm, the Royal Army seems to be like, oh, we have to do offense and defense. And their switches are not as fast as the ones from Nantes, uh, leaving their uh, jammer hanging a couple of times. And then f managing not to be defense uh, enough when the jammer arrives. I am loving watching the communication between Adrenaline and uh, Buzz out there right now. There's just Adrenaline is just chilling at the back of that <laughs> tripod. Just gives a nod every now and again to Buzz, who comes in and tries to break it up. And, just, and Adrenaline's now is like, yeah, all four of you, clear that line, thank you. And that was a beautiful screen move, protected that inside line, and a third scoring pass completed in beautiful time there by Nons. 169, nice play, 70. To the Royal Army. That kind of communication really can help with making no penalties and taking time. But I said it before, it's they have the space to actually do that because they are in the lead and they have quite the large point differential. This is a good game to uh, match. Uh, to see what uh, Nantes versus Namur will do ne tomorrow. Uh, they had quite a... Um, uh, Namur had, uh, is 201 uh, from uh, the Royal Army with 252 against 67. And uh, we can say that the Royal Army scored a little bit more here, but Nantes is not scoring as much yet. Um, and I'm guessing they won't score 90 points in yeah. the last in the next uh, gems and it, and it backs up the flat track stats predictions for tomorrow's game which says Numeo should take it so we are I mean you need to join us tomorrow for that because it's going to be very interesting uh, our first game of tomorrow I believe is Leeds yeah, versus the Royal Army, which again, I think after playing Namur and Nantes is gonna be very interesting to see how much the Royal Army have learned and are able to put into place over a short period of time. And then of course, Nantes versus Namur, and it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be a tasty game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And especially when you consider that in April they played each other and it was a win for Nantes. Yeah. So it's uh, it's pretty exciting to see and if, if it will be such a confidence boost if Namur can be able, will be able to take uh, that win. Uh, we all know what it's like to have that nemesis, that one team to beat, and then when you do, you feel like you're flying and soaring through the air. Well, if anybody uh, knows about upsets, it should be you, that is for sure. Yeah, yeah well, it, it was a surprise as much for us as it was for everyone else. 
So for those of you who don't know, of course, Nick Mox was represented Antwerp at the Continental Cup. And I got up very early to announce Antwerp versus Dublin, who was a number one rank. And you guys weren't even invited, right? No, we yeah, had no. Middlesbrough passed and you went, yeah, we're all right. Yeah, and seed then, nine, we said to each other. Yeah, and then you blew the number one seed out of the park. So rankings don't always mean everything, folks. No. But that does mean that you can really come to a, 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 a tournament like this and actually wow everyone. And uh, at the underdog position is a thankful position we to play because they're, the only way is up. Really. Absolutely. And in, let's be honest, in roller derby, we always cheer for the underdog. Of course. You want to cheer in section. Loose. Be on the losing <laughs> side. We'll cheer for you. In the meantime, somebody who needs no applause is Bloody Cherry, who is doing their jamming efficiently and beautifully on that outside line. But lovely move there. That was number eight. That's Lady Lovely Blocks with a lovely block on Bloody Cherry. But up front, gazing wistfully over her shoulder is Derby Spice, praying to the Derby gods that offense might arrive soon. Both looks to try and answer that, but that little split of distraction of should I go and play offense really open that line to set Bloody Cherry free. Uh, so beautiful line work there done by uh, by Derby Spice as well passing by the outside line all the nine blockers but it, it is not again on the second scoring pass and that's really how they managed to get this big lead in this game is that they don't they do not only do one scoring pass they do two or three. Yeah, I think for the Royal Army, they've really got to focus on getting that jammer out and shutting down these multiple passes. That's going to be the key for them to keeping down these differentials because their gameplay is great. They've got some really strong jammers doing some wonderful stuff, but there's another level that their blockers need to find, I think, just to cut that down a little bit. But yeah, I also think their defense is actually very well. It's just that that one hesitation that you talked about earlier, that one hesitation to send that offense, if they take that hesitation off, they will be unstoppable. It's that thinking time, isn't it? It's mm. that muscle memory that is, you know, you're really looking for. And right now, it feels like the Royal Army are thinking a lot about what they need to do out on track. Hopefully, a bit more time, that's going to become second nature to them. So, doing themselves a great service here, coming up against some good teams and answering well, frankly. Interesting start, starting position there for the Royal Army, really surrounding that entire wall. Um, but it is Adrenalines who takes the lead. Quick pursuit though by Nick, uh, Pixie Knuckle Dust. Not something we see very often. Those two jammers really close uh, together. Uh, this is the first time we've seen defensive jamming from Adrenalines who furiously taps the hip. No, no, no points, no points for you at all. Hold everybody scoreless. Nil pois here. And direct that look to the to the box. Did I get my blocker out? Yeah, and we have got an official review coming in here now. So you can have time to talk amongst yourselves for a moment. <laughs> we will take a breather here because it's been quite a day of roller derby here at Skate Around 3. Thank you for joining us on the stream. You do have one more game to come. Uh, as we mentioned, that is Leeds versus Namur. That's going to be your final game of today. And of course, we will be back with more games tomorrow. Three games tomorrow we have, um, I believe. Yeah, so three games tomorrow, and that those will be like the closer games. This, uh, the first day, we had quite a lot of um, point differentials between the teams, uh, often more than 100 points, leaving the two teams um, that on the losing side uh, below 100, uh, the century mark, really, and that's. That's saying something. If you can hold the other team under 100, you've done an amazing job and you've worked really hard because you can might have 200 or 300 on the yeah. board, but if you manage to keep that other team under the 100, you've done an incredible job. Yeah, it's not just about collecting points, it's about not giving them up, you know. It's really important to keep that, that sheet as clean as possible. Yeah, this is not soccer where every goal is just good. It's, <laughs> yeah. This is roller, a roller derby and the point differential is actually more what counts yeah. than the amount of points you make. You're absolutely right, because yeah, in football, as long as, you, as long as you win, it doesn't matter, does yeah. it? You know, yes, sometimes goal difference comes into it, but of course, here in roller derby we absolutely calculate our rankings based on those score differentials and some seriously complicated maths oh my god uh, i i still don't know how that works no i feel and then some people say it's everybody's responsibility to know how that works and i'm like 
Don't make me do math. And all I have to say to that is thank you to Derby on Toast for our live rankings uh, that we all love to be able to view in doing that work for us. Uh, not so much of a thank you for the bracket challenge, which I have spectacularly failed miserably at most of the season. However, I was very pleased to call the final three in the correct order for champs. So Oh, that's... Well, that's incredible too. I was happy with that. I was yeah. happy with that. So, unlike the weekend where you ruined my bracket at the yeah. Continental Cup in game one, me Don't and 97% of other <laughs> people. Yeah. yeah. We'll never bet well, against Antwerp be again. No. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Your bracket too shall die. <laughs> so, we are ready to recommence. It is 70 to the Royal Army, 181 to Nont. Iron Duck is out there for Nont. Derby Spice for the Royal Army. Empty penalty box because these guys have played a seriously clean game. And again, uh, uh, the Royal Army manages to keep that block, that jammer behind, but it's the offense that really stirs up trouble in their wall, making uh, making the chaos and giving the, uh, uh, the lead to Iron Duck for Nantes. And it's handy that Iron Duck is a jammer who very rarely needs to star pass because the non-pivot is in the box right now. <laughs> um, but they're, they're always fine. It's Iron Duck. Don't worry about it. But up front, Darby Spice cannot get past number 44, Greenbergen. And Greenbergen now has reinforcements as well as we see Iron Duck take the Royal Army all the way through to turn four now. Uh, not with a bit of blocker trouble here, two in the box. Yes, and number 35, uh, 37 manages to pass through the inside line using her own defensive blockers as an offense and now coming in on her first scoring pass. Iron Duck just looking to slow the progress of Derby Spice down and taps the hips, calls that jam, picks up three, I believe. Mm -hmm. I, f I find it very interesting to see how Nantes does everything in their power to kill the time to make sure the penalty box is empty. I see them. I see the Germans looking at the penalty box like constantly, making sure that if it's possible, they get those people out. Uh, and it's a wise move as a jammer. You want as many of your team yeah. on the track to help you through at the start of the next jam. And our next set of jammers is Bloody Cherry versus Pixie Knuckle Dust. Not seen this match up too much, but two jammers, very similar statues. And Pixie Knuckle Dust, as we go into the final five minutes, yet again, finds another gear. Um, Where do the they find it? I don't know, but it feels like they almost realize the game is getting away from them. And they switch on and they come back in. But lovely move from Greenberg in there, just taking out Pixie one on one. The Nantes blockers are really good at the one-on-one -on -one as well, and they're not afraid to do it. It's all about the confidence, I believe. And they know their backup is going to come. Like, I only have to hold this for a couple of seconds, yeah. and then somebody else is going to come on. But Dead, the captain from Nantes, taking the star pass. Oh, that beautiful footwork on the inside line by Pixie Knuckle Dust. That's something to rewatch 100 million times. We are going to be checking that one out again, and I'm sure Pixie will be looking at it with pride. Goes for the outside. Physics denies Pixie, <laughs> along with Greenbergen. Couldn't hang on inbounds, but we see Dead just doing everything they can. And again, we go into the dying stages of this game, and the Royal Army are on it. Yeah, it's incredible to see how that works. Like, where, where did, did they all just have, like, sugar rushes in during that last <laughs> timeout. It's, there's something strange in the first 10 of the last 10 minutes with the Royal Army and they, you know, I'm telling you they're going to be a force to be reckoned with when they can drag that out all the way. But oh, lovely toast. Just scooting almost by Pixie through. It's eight on the board for the Royal Army versus four for Nantes. They want to make the most out of this momentum from for Pixie to make sure that they get this win of this gem, I believe. Absolutely. But Nont in there doing really well. Grumpy Space Princess just disrupting the Nont uh, tripod beautifully. Does not lose a blocker to the penalty box. Pixie using that confusion of that penalty there to actually swoop on the outside line. She didn't manage to get past everyone, but I think, I think she did manage to score uh, a few points there for her team. And it's 8-11 uh, in favor of the Royal Army here. Um, 192 in favor of Nantes, 
81 for the Royal Swedish Roller Derby. And we are left with uh, just one minute 50 on the period clock, two minutes on the jam clock. So if this goes the whole way, it will kill this game off. So we see Adrenaline's out there, Fortnon up front, pushing, going up against Bella Bazaar, who is dealing with a tripod at the back. It's three on three, so defense, ahoy. Um, as Adrenaline has a little lie down on the pivot from the Royal Army. This is what happens when we don't have offense in this game. It drags a, a lot more uh, to get that lead position. It's Adrenaline's complete other determination to get that lead, that to push and push um, the, to that gives her the lead position in this game. Because, I mean, Roller Derby really is a game that requires offense now. Our defense has become so incredible. So actually losing that blocker to the box, as we see the Royal Army do now, is inhibiting. It does mean that you aren't able to provide that support to your jammer. And it is a track cut picked up by Bella Bazaar. So the Royal Army just making a little bit of a meal of things at the end of this game, <laughs> giving a power jam to Adrenaline, who hits the floor, stays in bound somehow. Okay. Forearms being issued to a non-blocker. So 40 or 41 seconds on the jam clock, 30 seconds on the period clock. We looks like not are sensibly going to win this. One more pass. We'll see them hit the 200 mark. Again, beautifully a coordination between the jammer and the blockers. The jammer actually. Making the hit first, forcing the wall to go out, offense going on the inside, clearing the entire lane, and making Adrenaline's uh, work that much easier. Can't decide from none who I like more, whether it's Buzz, Dead, or in fact, uh, number 11, Valdang. Uh, I can't quite decide the three of them have been so influential in that game. We come in, it is the unofficial scores right now on the board. 81 to the Royal Army, 204 to none, which sets us up beautifully for our game tomorrow. Yeah, the, that's also like, it, it's it uh, the, depicts that the, the stats might be right because Namur managed to keep Royal Army uh, 20 points or uh, 10 points less than uh, Nantes did, but uh, did manage to score about 40 to 50 points more than Nantes. So if that is the right way to go, then this might be in favor of Namur, but then again, tomorrow is another day and uh, we never know what happens. You never know who's going to sleep badly, who's going to have a stone in their shoe, who is just going to be in one of those moods. Make sure you join us to find out how it all plays out, but join us for our last game between uh, Namur and Leeds very shortly. I've been Riggs. I am Nick Mops. Thanks for joining us here at Skate Around 3. Thank you.